Hello there. Now we're going to start this edition by looking at some of the painful comments we've received that demonstrate how terrified some older people are about losing the wind fuel payment. And we're also going to look at the proposed assisted dying bill. Now, given the removal of the wind fuel payment, is it ironic or suspicious that the government is apparently trying to rush this through? Conspiracy theorists will have a field day. Welcome to Grey Matters. Hello there and welcome to Grey Matters, the channel that promotes the fact that the older generation still matters, still has relevance and which looks at issues that matter to the older generation. Now we're going to start with some of the heartbreaking comments we've received following the callous removal of the winter fuel payment. Now we often get comments from critics that most of us don't need the payment and we spend it on holidays abroad and Christmas presents for the grandchildren. And to be fair, I'm sure that most people would agree that pensioners living abroad and those in the 40% tax bracket don't need it, probably shouldn't get it. A quick and easy means test, I would have thought. But no, in one fell swoop, Reeves has taken it away from 9 million pensioners, regardless of need, whilst of course claiming thousands of pounds for her own heating allowances. And that's courtesy of you and me, the British taxpayers. So comment number one comes from Des Gardner. Uh, he said that last night was the first of the cold nights in my house. Yes, the temperature has dropped in the last couple of days. I live in the West Midlands and I'm 81 and my wife is 78. We don't qualify for any benefits because we're just over the top because we paid into a small private pension for the last 15 years of our working lives. We retired in 2008 after working for 50 years. The government has taken away my heating allowance, so my house will remain cold. Shame on the powers that be that would rather look after people who had never paid a penny into the system. Yeah, that's true enough. And Des is typical of the two million or so pensioners that just missed the pension credit threshold, but who nevertheless need the support. It's not as if we even get the full value of our pensions, is it, because of tax? Of course, the Treasury argues that NI was deducted pre-tax, so it's only right to tax it upon payment. Plus, I seriously think the state pension should be tax-free. There's precious little of it anyway, is there? Comment number two comes from Christine Davis. Now she says, I have no words. I'm so afraid for the future. I'm 76 and my heart is failing. I've had a valve transplant and my daughter and I are disabled. She lives with me and they stopped my carer's allowance when my state pension started. I've also got osteoporosis and have rebroken my hip plate and they said my heart, my heart cannot take an anaesthetic for an operation to repair it, I assume, Christine. We did not turn on the heating today, even though it was colder and my leg hurt so much. As the winter really comes on, my daughter and I will suffer. She has a brain and bone condition and feels the cold so much. I really worry for her as it gets colder. Now, I'm, I'm really sorry to hear about this, Christine, but I think you should check again with the benefits people because I know of folk on state pensions who receive allowances either because they are disabled themselves or they're looking after uh, caring for a disabled family member. And I believe that both of you and your daughter could individually be entitled to the carer's allowance or tenant's allowance or whatever it's called these days. It would also be worth speaking to the Citizen, Citizens Advice Bureau about your circumstances as they should be able to clarify your rights and entitlements. But taking what you say at face value, in my book, Pensions are supposed to pay for everyday living, rent, food, household insurance, telephone, things like that. There's no leeway in it to allow for caring for a disabled family member. And I, I just don't get why the benefits people assume that you're suddenly extra wealthy when your state pension kicks in. And, you know, they assume you can afford the cost of caring. I think to withdraw the carer's allowance in those circumstances is a clear indication that the whole system needs reform. I hope, Christine, you're, you're able to get more help and, and manage to keep yourself warm and, and keep safe. 
The next comment comes from Kevin Burrows. He said, you say depressing, isn't it? It's actually more depressing for those of us who have nothing. I'm probably not going to be here for the new government. I'm 74. I lost my wife last year and suffered depression without all this. It's terrible. Uh, Kevin was referring to our last video and yes, I did say it was a depressing situation and it is. Whatever your circumstances is depressing and worrying. We know there's more to come, with more attacks on elderly populations, ability to survive. I just pray that people like Kevin will cope and come out on the other side. And there will be another side as soon as this government is kicked into touch. Now, the next comment comes from Rustycry5413. And he says, I can't make any more sacrifices and my mental health is shot. So my plan is to move abroad. I can no longer afford to live in the UK and nor do I want to live in a totalitarian state. Yeah, OK, Rusty Cry, it, it's not just the mega rich that are leaving the UK because of this government's decisions. Uh, while they're leaving to avoid losing their big bucks in taxes, Rusty Cry is one of the several pensions I've heard of who are leaving the UK just to survive. I think it's a shocking indictment of, of what's happening in this country, isn't it? And there is so much happening at the moment. Uh, again, these views are nothing to do with being right-wing or left-wing. These views are about the way we're being governed. Whichever party is in power or could be in power, if these things were happening, I think we and everyone else would be just as critical. So, when we come back, we'll be taking a look at the assisted dying bill. And that might extend the available choices this winter. You never know. Heat, eat or to cease. See you in a mo. Hello and welcome back. Now, rumour has it that the government is trying to rush through an assisted dying bill. Assisted dying is legal in many countries across the globe, including uh, Austria, uh, Belgium, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Australia, New Zealand, Portugal, Spain, Switzerland and about 14 states in the US, but not here in the UK. Back in 2021, Baroness Meacher, who was the chairwoman of Dignity in Dying, introduced a private member's bill in the House of Lords that would allow terminally ill patients to end their lives, provided they have the consent of two medical practitioners and the High Court. The form of death will be prescribed self-administered life-ending drugs. And do note it only applies to terminally ill patients. So and that should help to allay suspicions that speeding up its progress has anything to do with the expected increase in winter deaths. Its full title is A Bill to Allow Adults Who Are Terminally Ill, Subject to Safeguards, to Be Assisted to End Their Own Life and for Connected Purposes. What? Connected Purposes? Now, that does worry me. I mean, what the heck does it mean? Connected to what? Connected to the terminally ill patient? Or is it something more sinister? Okay, I, I know I'm being facetious when I say it sounds a little bit like a loophole to allow this Orwellian government to put down anyone it wants. People causing offence on Facebook, maybe, or people who want to vote Tory, Lib Dem or Reform. But the issue is, I've scoured the bill, I've checked the appendices, I've checked other informed sources, and nowhere can I find a definition for connected purposes. I truly find it strange that it's part of the long-form title of the bill, but I can't find it referenced anywhere. Maybe someone out there has got an answer. Can you give me a definition of connected purposes? Now, as I said, the bill only applies to terminally ill patients, but they have to be reasonably expected to die within six months. And as I said, the patient's got to have the consent of two medical practitioners and the High Court. The end of life meds must be prescribed by a doctor and the patients must voluntarily self-administer. It, it would be illegal for anyone else to administer those drugs. The family or next to kin too has no say in the process, in order, I imagine, to prevent coercion. However, more about that in a moment. 
Now, I personally think this is a huge step forward. To allow someone in terrible pain an early release from it is, in my opinion, right, proper and humane. I mean, we do it for our pets, for goodness sake, yet fellow humans are expected to suffer through terminal illness until they die. But not everyone agrees. Care Not Killing states that assisted suicide will place pressure on vulnerable people to end their lives for fear of being a financial, emotional or care burden upon others. The right to die can so easily become the duty to die. That's you know, a valid point, but as the legislation will provide, they must be expected to die within six months anyway. So I think it's unlikely that they would end their lives early because of a feeling that it's their duty to do so. Uh, I hope that's one of the safeguards that, that's built in. But they also state that things can very quickly spiral out of control. They spiral downwards with people being killed against their will by doctors. And they say we're seeing that happen in today's countries like Belgium, the Netherlands and Canada. People are being pressured into euthanasia because of a lack of access to social care or the cost of health care. Really? I would love to see the evidence for that. That sounds like a, a broad sweeping statement, doesn't it? The Care Not Killing also says that many people, note the word many, many people are having their lives ended without their consent being obtained. Care Not Killing Chief Executive Dr Gordon MacDonald claims that children who can't give informed consent routinely have their lives ended by doctors in Belgium. And in the Netherlands, doctors even kill disabled infants with spine bifida. Well, if there is clear evidence of this happening, I'd be surprised because I suspect it will be illegal. And let's face it, the majority of doctors do live by their Hippocratic Oath. I mean, Dr MacDonald appears to be adamant that evidence shows abuses occur. And in that way, safeguards are eroded, removed or ignored. Well, maybe our use of the High Court is the answer to that. But I, sorry, I find it very difficult to believe what they're saying about Belgium and the Netherlands is true. So I'd love to see the evidence. It seems almost like some of the arguments we've been hearing about with the abortion clinics and things in the States, a lot of um, drama and fake news and stuff like that going up. I'm not saying it's, it's not right. i am just like proof that it is. Now, it, the 2021 bill was updated this year and it's had its second reading in the House of Lords. Now, it still has to go through the committee stage, the report stage and the third reading stage before it reaches the House of Commons, where it has to go through all that again. However, as I said, there are suggestions that the government wants to fast track it through the remaining stages. I'm not sure why that would be necessary. Um, it would be good to have the legislation out there once it's you know been through the stages to be sure that it is safe and robust but why the need to fast track it never mind let's see what happens i'd like to know what your opinions are i mean are you in favor or has caring not killing's viewpoint made you stop and think would you consider assisted dying if the alternative was to spend months in pain before you finally succumb to your illness? I don't know now. I think maybe I'm sitting back on the fence a little. But one thing I do know is that if I don't get my chores done here at Grey Matters Towers, my wife will probably save them the trouble of bringing in the bill. Hmm. I will uh, leave links to the bill and the Caring Not Killing website below. Do join in the discussion with your comments. We love reading them. Uh, well, keep well and keep safe. And until the next time on Grey Matters, it's bye for now.